Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Friday, September 21st, Market Watchers Live Show with your hosts, Tom Boley and Aaron Swinlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. Well, we got the Dow Jones Industrial Average moving further into record territory. Currently, the Dow Jones up another 100 points to just uh, almost, well, actually just above 26,750. The S&P 500 up about six and a half points, setting another all-time high as well. We continue to see relative weakness on the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000. Both of those indices are down today, despite strength on the Dow and the S&P. The 10-year Treasury yield flat. It was down a little bit earlier, but it has come back and is currently flat on the session. Volatility continues to trend lower. That is bullish for equities. We now see a VIX down close to the 11 area, and that uh, tends to coincide with very bullish action. Industrials leading the market to the upside. Huge uh, advance that we've seen here in September in the industrials. We started the month down closer to 76. Now we're up testing 80. Energy also trying to make a breakout here. Uh, just looking back over the last six weeks or so, we moved up into the 75s. We've been struggling to close there. We'll see whether or not we can close there today. AAL, American Airlines and Delta Airlines, DAL. These are two of the reasons why we are seeing industrials performing so well. Airlines really on fire. I want to talk about those in just a bit. Not just these two stocks, but also airlines in general. McDonald's uh, raised their dividend this morning, and uh, they're having a McHappy day today, up three and a half bucks, 164. And Texas Instruments also raising their dividend, announcing an additional buyback of $12 billion. You can see Texas Instruments up about $2 today, also having a nice day. Aaron, it is the end of another trading week. I tell you, we're only a week away from the end of September. It's unbelievable how fast this month is going. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. It, it falls starting, though. I'm excited for fall to get started. Can you believe this activity, though? We're just going straight up right now. It's, you know, last week, everybody voted that they thought uh, we would end the week lower. Not happening. Yeah, I think I've said lower, too. I'm not, I don't even really remember what I said. I can't remember from week it to week. It was based on, like, what it closed at. And it closed at a point that you did say higher. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, so you win. <laughs> I was I said mostly unchanged. I have been neutral for the last couple of weeks, but Yeah, I can't remember to get the trash out on Thursday, so there's no way I can remember what I said last Friday. But anyhow, we uh, we got a special guest in today. Mary Ellen McGonigal is back. She's gonna be talking about what's hot and what's not later in the show. How are you doing today, Mary Ellen? Oh, wonderful. Yes, and I agree. It's been really an exciting month. Because going into September, I know a lot of people were really just worried that we were going to be in for a tumble, but uh, we're, we're still chugging along. Well, I, I tell you, I know that uh, you, you're doing this segment with us now regularly, uh, this what's hot, what's not. I thought maybe I threw that McHappy in for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a, yeah. You mean uh, looking at McDonald's? Yeah, looking at McDonald's. Yeah. Just talking yeah. About open and just threw that McHappy. The shareholders that, are happy today. That, <laughs> I like the play on words. I understand they're they're getting rid of their Happy Meals. Did you? Oh, wow. Yeah. Didn't For real? Know? I did not hear that. Well, uh, maybe I'm starting a rumor, but I did see that they are, uh, there's something going on with their Happy Meals. I'll, I'll do a little work <laughs> on that. <laughs> okay, but they still have the extra value meal. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. That's, that's a winner. Okay, that can't be changing that on me or I'll be upset. <laughs> anyway, well, we're going to come back to you. I know you got a lot to go over. Uh, Super. So we'll bring you back in about 15 minutes if that's okay. Sounds great. All right, awesome. Aaron, we got a busy day. What do we got going on? Oh, absolutely. And a busy week, as usual. Uh, we have an earnings spotlight coming up next week. That'll be good on Monday to come on in with that. Tom, you've got a workshop coming up. Have you yet to figure out your subject? Uh, something to do with trading. Oh, that sounds good. I think that'll be very, very useful. <laughs> Tom McClellan will be joining us on Wednesday. It'll be great to have him back. And Dan Russo from the Power Feed and uh, Chaken Analytics will be with us on Thursday. Friday, Mary Ellen will be back. Uh, I think we're going to be doing a regular spot now with Mary Ellen on Fridays. So big applause for that. All right. What's going on today? Well, as 
as we said, Mary Ellen will be here to do what's hot and what's not. 10 and 10 to 1. Our first symbol is going to be Advanced Auto Parts, AAP, if you want to go take a look at that before. And we will finish with my sentiment update. I'll let you know what people are feeling and thinking and where the money's actually going. So stay tuned for that. All right, Tom, technical news and headlines. Let's get it going. All right. Well, you can see the 10-year Treasury yield, as I mentioned earlier, flat today, 3.08%. But it does come off of this huge uh, move to the upside where we did see the 10-year Treasury yield 2.81% just about four weeks ago. And now all of a sudden, we've got the big move up. It's not surprising because I do think longer term, we are in an uptrend on the 10-year Treasury yield. I think that's pretty evident when you look at a three-year chart. Uh, we've had big moves, sideways consolidation, more moves, sideways consolidation. And now it seems like if we get that breakout above 3.11%. I do think this would be a boon to the financial stocks. Uh, they have begun to show some life of late. So that was something to keep in mind. As far as economic news, we only had one thing out this morning. It was 945 Eastern, just after the market opened. September PMI composite flash came in at 53.4, which was just a little below expectations of 55.1. And uh, as a result, well, nothing. 10-year Treasury yield didn't budge. So uh, we're just kind of watching the yield, see if we get this breakout. It almost looks a little bit like off of an uptrend maybe a little bit of a cup now from a longer term perspective as well, where uh, if we pull back maybe to that three level or maybe even just below three, we could be printing a little handle. I expect we're going to get a breakout the fourth quarter on the 10 year treasury yield. Uh, let's go on to airlines I mentioned earlier, industrials having a good day and you can see why airlines up about two and a half percent today, making a big push. And the thing that's exciting about this, as we've seen this uptrend begin, in July and continue throughout August and September is the seasonality. I'll be talking about seasonality next week for October, but let's just take a little sneak peek here at the airline group. And what you're going to see is that over the last 19 years, look at October. It's been up 89% of the time and it averages, the airline index averages going up 6.8% in October 4.6% in November, 2.5% in December. And you add those up across there and you come up with 13.9%. So roughly airlines go up on average about 14% in the fourth quarter alone going back over the last 19 years. So seeing the group performing as well as it is as we head into October tells me that uh, based on the historical tailwinds that we tend to get, this is a group that you certainly want to keep an eye on. Now, if we take a look, and actually before I look at the charts, let's pull up AAL. I don't think there is as much history on AAL. Yeah, I think it's only going to be six or seven years, six years. But look at October, 11.3%. It's averaged in October, 7.4% in November, and it's gone up each of the last six years in December. We have 100% uh, participation to the upside, and 3.9% is the average in, in December. So over the last six years, AAL has, what is that, 18, 7, 20, 22.6% in the fourth quarter. Now, again, it's only over six years, but still pretty strong when you consider what it does the rest of the year. Um, and then the other one I mentioned was Delta Airlines, DAL. Uh, this has a much higher scooter rank right now than AAL. I believe it, uh, American Airlines is around 25, and I think Delta is around 75. So with Delta, you're looking at a much better um, stock technically right now than AAL. But look at October. Delta over the last 12 years has been up 91% of October's, which uh, doing the simple math tells me 11 out of 12 years. 11.6% is what it's averaged going up just during October. 2.5% in November, 6.5% in December. So you're talking about over 20% that Delta has averaged going up in the fourth quarter over the last 12 years. And when we take a look at the chart, on Delta, you will see a stock that is just breaking out to a new high. I'm going to go back and let, let's stretch this out to a year, get a little bit more technical data. But look at the double top there at 59 and look at what we're doing right now, breaking out. So we have been sideways consolidating in Delta. And by the way, if we look at the airlines over the same period, airlines have not yet gotten back to that high we saw in January. So with Delta, you have an outperforming stock, which if we pull up the relative chart, it's outperforming relative to its peers. 
Actually, that's not what I wanted. Let's try this again. So it's outperforming relative to its peers, but not so much the S&P because the S&P is already into breakout territory. So here's the airline starting to regain, regain strength. Here is Delta relative to the airlines. You can see that we have continued to rise. And then you look at it versus the S&P. Well, we haven't broken out yet. But again, keep in mind, uh, airlines haven't broken out. You can see relative to the S&P 500, they really haven't performed that well, although they are beginning to uptrend relative to the S&P just in time for their seasonally strong fourth quarter. So I do think that airlines is a group to kind of keep an eye on and uh, pullbacks or key support levels would certainly make sense to maybe take a shot here. A couple of stocks in the news today. I mentioned McDonald's. So let's pull the chart up. McDonald's raised their dividend from $1.01 to $1.16. So it was a 15% increase in its dividend. And you can see the result. Market loves it. Very heavy volume. And uh, we are about to challenge some key overhead resistance between 165 and 166. Texas Instruments mentioned the raised dividend here. They went from 62 cents to 77 cents. So that's almost a 25% increase in their dividend. And they authorized uh, the repurchase of an additional $12 billion in their stock. So the company has been under, was under pressure there for a few weeks. It has started to rebound. Now we're getting back above the 20 day moving average, which is a good sign technically. Micron, let's stick to the semis. Micron came out with its earnings, uh, 353 versus 332. Great news. Revenues, 8.44 billion versus eight and a quarter billion. Great news. Stocks down 2.3%. Why? They lowered their guidance going forward. And I tell you what, taking a look at some of these chip stocks like Micron, like Applied Materials, like Intel, don't be surprised if some of these miss or lower guidance as we go forward. There's Applied Materials been in a downtrend. Here's Intel. And then you've got the other end of the uh, spectrum with Advanced Micro AMD continuing to rise. What they say about, you know, what they come out with in terms of their quarterly earnings and what they say about their guidance, I think will be completely different. I think AMD is going to have a solid report, and I think some of the other chips I mentioned are going to struggle. Adobe announced an acquisition of a software marketing company with a cloud platform. The name of the company is Marketo, and they bought it for $4.75 billion. I believe there's a conference, hall, conference call coming up in a couple hours to discuss the acquisition. I was looking to see if it was a stock uh, acquisition or if it was cash. I did not uh, see which one it was, but the stock is down today. So it's telling me maybe it was a stock purchase and uh, maybe there's a little dilutive effect here. I'm not sure. But anyway, Adobe is down, but testing its 20 day moving average. Nothing bad technically here. Uh, United um, UNFI, United Natural Foods came out. They missed on their bottom line by 10 cents, 76 cents versus 86. They missed on their revenues. Uh, they did guide fiscal year 19 revenues higher, but EPS in line. And the market is not in a forgiving mood right now with UNFI. I've seen a couple of other uh, gap downs. And like I always say, and it's been an adage on Wall Street for a long time, never just one cockroach in the kitchen. And you can see just here in the last three or four months, we have seen a few cockroaches in United Natural Foods kitchen. And there's no pun intended there. Uh, final stock I want to mention was uh, Pier 1 Imports, PIR. They warned today lowering their EPS and comparable sales guidance. Stock was in a downtrend already. If we pull up this relative chart, uh, take a look at what's been going on here. Pier 1 Imports, it's in the home improvements area, which has been on fire. This stock has been underperforming very, very badly for a long time. We shouldn't be shocked when they come out and warn. This is what happens in the stock market. Price action tells us everything, at least everything we need to know. Anyhow, with that, uh, I know we've got a bunch of upgrades and downgrades. Aaron, what are you looking at this morning? All righty, let's get started on those. I have uh, three upgrades and three downgrades, so let's take a look. Pretty interesting, actually, I thought, uh, most of these, so I will get right to it. So our first one is a downgrade. Let's see, we're going to look at Beezer Homes. Get my... And this one was downgraded from overweight to neutral. Uh, 
I'm surprised it's just neutral. <laughs> With this breakdown, it's looking pretty bad. And you can see we've been in a, you know, we had mostly sideways consolidation here, took a step downward, have been somewhat consolidating, I would say more trending lower. Look at the PMO, we got a top below that signal line. It is an oversold territory. So, you know, there there's some hope possibly there. Uh, but let's look at the weekly chart and see what that has has to say. And you can see there's there's certainly a lot of downside opportunity. I would want to hold this $11 range though, because you can see we had support here. That that helped. Uh, that was where we took a leap to the upside. Uh, but not liking this chart, I can see why it, it was downgraded. Johnson Controls, another ugly chart. I thought this one was downgraded by J.P. Morgan from a neutral to an underweight. Uh, this one's setting up technically. Uh, for the head and shoulders execution. And uh, you've got, here's your left, right shoulder, there's your head, neckline running, just sloping upward slightly. And, you know, PMO had the sell signal, it's still heading lower. If this head and shoulders executes, if we get the breakdown here, like you're supposed to, to see, if that will, of course, confirm the pattern, and we would look for a minimum downside target, the height of this pattern, and lo and behold, I think that would take us pretty much right down to support here at 3250. So I would be certainly looking for more downside on Johnson Controls. All right, our other and final downgrade is Roper Technologies. This one was downgraded by JP Morgan also uh, from overweight to neutral. So not quite as, uh, you know, it was a downgrade, but sitting in neutral isn't as bad as being underweight. Uh, but I can see this PMO cell signal kind of lining up here. And if you look at these uh, PMO tops, uh, the last two here, uh, they are declining. And we saw them rising here in price. We've got the rounded top, but it is sitting on some very important support. If we can hold this support, you know, you could see a, a move to the upside. But I suspect we're going to lose that support, which is why we got the downgrade today. I would look for a move down to that 290 area if we do get that breakdown. All right, a couple of upgrades for us. IPG Photonics. Raymond James upgraded this from a market perform to a strong buy. Uh, I thought this had some interesting uh you know, traits. The scooter is, you know, pretty much at zero, uh, 0 0.9 to be exact. But there's there are some positives on this chart, and it was upgraded. So I, I see these declining uh, bottoms on price, but rising bottoms on the PMO. It's come out uh, with a buy signal and oversold territory. We're getting, we got a rounded bottom here, and now what could end up being a breakaway gap. I'm, I'm not going to call it that yet because it could certainly turn out to be an island. You know, when I see the 50 this far below the 200-day EMA, that's, that's a pretty bearish, uh, you know, a bear market setup here for this chart uh, just to go out of the gate. And so you should expect not necessarily uh, bullish outcomes. But I think with the upgrade, I'd look for at least a move to, to the top uh, to this gap resistance right here where we had that uh, fatal drop. Uh, back at the beginning of the uh, last bit of uh, July. Next upgrade, AT&T. Uh, UBS upgraded this from a neutral to a buy. And, you know, I think this one looks pretty good. You've got the, again, this would be, I would consider this one a breakaway gap. Uh, you've got that move heading back up toward that $35 range. PMOs on the buy signal. It's certainly not what I would call overbought. You can see that uh, generally lows uh, and highs here move between minus three and positive three for the PMO. So we're not yet overbought. And you can see OBV uh, volume looking good. We've got rising bottoms, rising tops, and you know, scooters starting to make a comeback. So I think AT&T is looking pretty good. I'd look for that move at least to the $35 range. And finally, Under Armour upgraded today from underweight to neutral. Uh, I thought this chart looks pretty good with that breakout from that declining tops trend line. PMO is bottomed in oversold territory, ready to head higher. Uh, scooter improvement. And you can see this move on the OBV to start uh, 
more than likely setting up tops uh, higher than previous tops. Right now, of course, it's only beaten out uh, the last top from uh, earlier this week. So we'll have to see whether that can continue through. But I like that breakout. I'd be looking for a move to about 22. Uh, you know, it's, it's upgraded to a neutral, not to a buy. So, you know, it, it's not the perfect upgrade, but I think this uh, is looking pretty good for Under Armour. And that's all I had for the upgrades and downgrades. So let's go ahead and bring Mary Ellen in for what's hot and what is not. And I did have somebody mention in the chat room uh, I got to thank you for RIG, which I've been talking about for the last two days because it is having a pretty good day. Oh, and, super. And I noticed it was uh, not to take, steal some thunder here, but nope. I know it it's was on your list. Without a doubt. And we're going to talk about the dynamics as far as why that is picking up today and actually this week. And so that was a wonderful call, Aaron, because uh, if you look at those drillers, the rig is viewed as uh, the highest quality as far as earnings and uh, revenues projections. There are other stocks in that rigging area that are popping this week, but rig is far and away viewed as the uh, bellwether and the, the certainly highest quality as far as uh, management and earnings and all those other important metrics. So a uh, good call there. Excellent. Let's. Uh, what I wanted to do is just touch very briefly upon, I know I'm sure it was mentioned quite a bit this week, but the cannabis push and the big move in those stocks, I know I talked about them last Friday, and really just how uh, these stocks have been quite volatile. So for those of you that have been following along, this is Tilray. This stock actually hit $300 on Wednesday after opening a, at 150. So it was up 100% on the day at one point. It closed down 40% from that high. And we can see the drop since then. It's down 25% or more uh, today. And for those of you not familiar, this is a Canadian-based a cannabis stock and it's moving in line because next month there's an anticipation that regulations surrounding recreational use of cannabis is going to be green lighted so a lot of these stocks that are parlaying that into other deals with big beverage firms are have really been popping but the volatility is there so be careful. There's another stock we can take a quick look at today. This one was up about 25%. It's now down 20%. This is David's Tea, D-T-E-A, and it's a Canadian uh, tea beverage company. And there is pure speculation surrounding their development and introduction of cannabis-infused beverages. So while the profits may be there. If you time it properly, certainly the risk is there as well. So, so uh, again, tread lightly. So let's move on to what's happening in the broader markets this week. And I can really sum it up in two words as far as what we are seeing in the way of rotation. It's been a very, very interesting week. And the two words I would use would be valuations and analyst upgrades and downgrades. Those have been the two big drivers. So what I'm showing you here is a daily price chart of industrials. And I know that Tom spoke to that earlier, how these industrial stocks have really been in play. We are very, very close to hitting an all-time new high in the industrial sector. I'm using XLI. We're looking at a daily price chart here. And the move into these industrial stocks is in line with what we're seeing bigger picture. And by that, I mean a lot of the recently hot areas. Uh, I mentioned this last Friday, how software stocks year to date into the close last Friday were up on average 40%. A lot of individual stocks up quite a bit more. So software as a sub industry group within technology has been absolutely the biggest grower, fastest moving group year to date. But I will tell you this week, we did see a pullback in a number of those stocks. And we are going to review that in the what's not area. But for now, let's focus on what is hot. And that is areas of the market that have been overlooked. And I would tell you industrials would fit that 
category, although more recently we can see the significant pickup here. And a lot of that has to do with trade tensions. That was an area, trade tensions, anticipation of potential tariffs was holding a lot of these stocks down. However, this week analysts decided to come out from under their rocks and point out the fact that a lot of these industrial stocks that were hit it was unnecessary in the sense that they have growth outside of China that can very clearly push them higher. So the first stock we can take a look at here is DEER. Ticker symbol is DE. And this is a stock that if you were to look at it as far as how it's classified, the stock is viewed as an agricultural farm equipment stock and as such would be very impacted by tariffs. But Lo and behold, if you drill down and look at the revenue sources, the company reported earnings a month ago. And when you look at, I actually took a look at the uh, conference call, the transcript and management talked about the driver of their revenue. The primary one is forestry, for, pardon me, forestry products. So that would be construction. So they do have a big development within farm equipment. But the primary driver at this point is, again, their forestry products and construction area. It's, it's expected to far outpace ag's agricultural as far as uh, strong revenues for the company. And analysts took note and have revised up their estimates. The stock is up a little over 4% this week. And uh, Tom, I'm not sure if you're going to talk about seasonality here, but we are in a super strong period for deer with seasonality and the anticipation in September for this stock. I believe on average over the last 10 years, it's actually gone up 14%. So we have a couple of drivers behind this stock. Another industrial stock that has picked up quite a bit this week, again, a lot of it based on valuation. Take a look how the stock has under performed the broader markets and other areas year to date. This is the peak back in January, but now it's having a nice pop. It's up 8% for the week. And this is another one that analysts are talking about. The d drive uh, revenue drivers from China are not as impactful as investors might think. They actually, Caterpillar has small and middle markets outside of China that is responsible for 60% of their revenues. <clears throat> oh, well, you've lost your audio, Mary Ellen. At least I have. Sorry about that. Are we good here? Yeah, no problem. I did oh my goodness. have a question actually that came in, so that works out good. Oh, great. Um, you know, they said, you know, if stocks like deer are going to go up, uh, then what are you thinking about emerging markets since they think that, you know, wouldn't it be tied to global growth? That is a wonderful question. And actually, there's been quite a talk, quite a lot in the way of talk on emerging markets because they've been so beaten down. But this is another area that is up. Uh, up 3%. We're looking at EEM. This is the Emerging Markets ETF. And we are finally starting to see a turn here. And this Emerging Market ETF, a lot of it has to do with the US dollar. It's not directly tied to growth within these uh, emerging market areas. And uh, what I did was hoping to pull up there was uh, an ETF that is uh, showing quite a bit in the way of robustness, and that was uh, India. But I can pull go back to that. But again, these smaller and middle market areas, their economies are growing, uh, believe it or not, and they are growing enough in the anticipation is it will be enough to continue to have a need for these construction uh, movers and, and so forth. So, uh, Let's take a look. What I did want to do is also take a look at another industrial stock that is picking up this week, and that's Boeing. And we're looking at a weekly price chart. The stock is up 3% on the week. This is really a handsome chart because the stock is now breaking out of a nine, almost 10-month 
space, it's doing so on big volume. This is another stock that had really been impacted by trade war fears with China. But the fact of the matter is, Boeing has a lot of other areas of growth. In fact, last week they won a very large contract for their air uh, for their airline products, and they continue to grow within security. Uh, and other areas. So Boeing is one that I would certainly keep on your radar screen. I did want to move on and take a look at another area within the broader markets that's really having a nice week. And this is something that I called on my weekly newsletter over last weekend to those that subscribe, that financial stocks were definitely due a bounce. And the reason is a lot of these banking stocks are tied to yields as we see a pickup in yields, oftentimes you'll see a pickup in banking stocks. And let's take a look. Uh, this is on stockcharts.com, the US 10 year treasury yield. And once we popped up above that 3% mark, that is the demarcation that's an, an, an impactful yield for the 10 year where it starts really impacting banking stocks. So we are seeing that this week, bank stocks are picking up quite a bit. And in particular, a lot of these larger, what are called money center banks, are really having quite the week. But the first stock here is uh, Bank of America. It was up over 3%. It's pulling back a bit today. So we're only seeing a move this week of 2%. But JP Morgan is up 4%. Ticker symbol is JPM. We're looking at a weekly price chart. And on the weekly, this green line is your 10-week or your 50-day simple moving average. And when you see stocks on your weekly display that pull back very orderly to that 10-day simple moving average, find support and bounce, take a look at the volume. That is really a bullish action. So JPM, there is anticipation that this, among other banking stocks, Citi is another. The ticker symbol is C for Citibank or Citigroup. This is another one. It's up 6% this week, pulled back to that 10-day simple moving average. Now, there are other dynamics going on with these larger banks. With Citigroup, there's been a changing of the guard or certainly an announcement. They are changing management from the top down. CFO, CEO, big changes going on. Wall Street likes it and they're uh, bidding the stock up. And then also these banking stocks are the first to report when earnings seasons begins next month. So we'll see Citi, JPM, Bank of America, they all report during that first week. And analysts have cited an anticipation of a super strong earnings season. In fact, Oppenheimer came out and announced that they have not seen as solid fundamental dynamics within these big banks in the over the past 33 years. This year, they are citing very strong strength. So that is another reason that a lot of these larger banks are picking up. Regional banks, we can use KRE, that's the ETF the S&P regional banking, these guys are lagging a bit. They're not even up 1%. So there is anticipation that we will see a broadening out into these other more smaller banks. I can point out one of the absolutely the strongest in there. This is a stock on my suggested holdings list at MEM Investment Research, SIBB. And this stock, the ticker symbol is SIVB. The name of the company is SVB Financial Group. They're up about 1.5%, not super dynamic quite yet, but I would put this on your radar screen. It's a super well-run organization, and they have a number of sources of income. Uh, So let's go ahead and take a look at another one that I would put on your radar screen. This is a regional Bank EWBC, East West Bank Corp. We're not in any way there yet. You can see the stock has broken down below key simple moving averages. Your RSI is negative, as is your MACD. But I will tell you the fundamentals are very sound for this company. So when we see that turn positive, if the stock breaks back above its key moving averages, your RSI trends weekly, 
I'm sorry, trends positively as well as your MACD, this would one be one that would take advantage of that. And here's a better view on the daily. You can see the downtrend is still very much in play. But again, if we see breaks up and more positive action, I would definitely uh, be a buyer. Lastly, on the what's hot side is energy stocks. I'm afraid I might not get to the what's not. But yes, so on the energy side, we have been seeing energy, actually oil prices are picking up and they are now trading and trending at about four year highs, depending on which you use, whether it's the Brent or uh, we can see that oil prices are at about that $70 level. So here is a view of XLE, the energy sector. And you can see that it has trended positively on the daily. Your RSI is negative. It's broken back above this 50 day. Now, the thing with energy, I will tell you, is we've seen these other head fakes. These stocks have been super volatile this year. They've been not only driven by the price of oil, but also if there have been any Mideast tensions, any global tensions impact these stocks. Uh, there's been a pickup as far as OPEC and their production of oil. So there's a lot of cross currents that go on within these energy stocks. But there is one area, and we touched on it earlier because Aaron very uh astutely picked up on the fact that rig was setting up quite nicely so let's talk about why rig and some of these other drillers the drilling group the drilling industry group is up four and a half percent so far this week so let's take a look at rig this is a daily and take a look at that it's popping over five and a half percent today after a significant move earlier this week so it really is setting up quite nicely and the reason that these drillers, and it is going to be a select group of drillers, but it's those that are focusing on uh, drilling as far as, uh, oh my gosh, offshore, offshore drilling. And so what's happening here is the Permian base and some of those shale based drillings, they're starting to dry up. You're seeing that those some of those drilling rigs are being deserted. There's a move toward offshore drilling projects and rig is seeing uh, during the first half of this year, their offshore drilling projects are worth more than all of their drilling projects in all of 2016. So a super big pickup. Analysts are excited. They think that 2019 is gonna be a continuation of growth in these offshore drilling projects. So it's really been a super strong area within uh, the energy stocks, those that are participating in these offshore drills. So uh, let's take a look. So those are the areas that are hot this week. I think we've touched upon, upon a fair amount. What I did wanna focus on are areas that are not so hot this week. And we talked about the fact that recently strong areas are seeing, are getting hit. And I would argue that it's profit taken, that it's not a true rotation because again, consumer, uh, computer software stocks have been up ever so much this year to date. Let's take a look at one of the bigger winning stocks. This is salesforce.com, CRM. And you can see the relative outperformance. This is a daily price chart. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a weekly and it will give you a better view of just how strong some of these stocks have been. This is the stock that's been on our suggested holdings list for quite some time. This is taking you back to February of this year, super strong uptrend. Now I will tell you within software, there are over 240 stocks in this grouping, but it's not that difficult to pick out these winners. These are the names that are having solid growth. Cloud-based computer is where the big demand, uh, computer software, that's where the big demand is. It is rather focused. From there, it branches off into many different industries. So CRM is not getting hit quite as hard, but let's take a look at some of the other names within software that have not fared as well. But you will see when I pull them up, they are still in clear cut longer term uptrends. This is ultimate software, ULTI. And this week, the stock is down almost 5%. This is a daily 
chart and you can see that the stock has broken down below that 10 day. That's your green line, simple moving average. Your RSI is trending negatively. Your MACD had a negative crossover with that black line down through the red. But I will argue that longer term, your uptrend is very much in place. And this actually could very well present itself as a buying opportunity on the sell-off. And there are certainly other stocks within computer software that have gotten hit that uh, this week. And for some reason, my list is eluding me, but we can certainly get back to that because uh, there are other areas that are getting hit this week. And let's go ahead and move on and I'll circle back to these software stocks. Staffing stocks are really getting hit. And for those of you that follow the markets closely, you may know that unemployment is at a 19 year low. So there are an awful lot of reasons why these stocks have done well. ASGN is the first stock that I'm going to be pulling up here. This is a sign and uh, one of the better known staffing stocks. But you can see this is a daily view. The stock has broken down below its 10 day as well as its 50 day. It could be finding support here at its 200 as it's really quite oversold. But what we are seeing with a number of these staffing stocks is analysts are looking out into the second half of next year. With unemployment so low, there is anticipation that at some point that very well could turn so that we could see these uh, estimates being begin to be revised down. But again, this is a case of high valuations. This is HSII. We're looking at uh, Hadrick and Struggles. This is a weekly. But take a look at the big run-up this stock had. This is taking us from the beginning of the year. The stock more than doubled into the close two weeks ago. So valuations as well as analyst downgrades, as I talked about, that is a reason that a lot of these stocks are moving. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another area of the markets. Actually, it's really difficult given the current market conditions to find a lot in the way that is not working. So I'm going to circle back and take a look at another area. And this is an area that Tom and I spoke about very briefly before the uh, open today as far as uh, stocks that within this group that are picking up, and that's the auto stocks. And what we are seeing with consumer cyclicals, let's take a look at what's not working in consumer cyclicals. And again, the uptrend is still very much in place, but they're getting hit. This is Etsy, E-T-S-Y. The stock is down 9% this week. It's breaking down below that 10-day simple moving average. But this is another stock that had an explosive move year to date. So any kind of breakdown would be profit taking. The longer term uptrend is still in place. But instead, in that consumer cyclical space over the last week plus, we've seen auto stocks picking up. And certainly one of the better names in there as far as technically and also fundamentally, this is R-A-C-E, Ferrari. And the ticker is... Uh, well, I said it, R-A-C-E, but what I did want to point out here is the RSI turning positive, as is the MACD this week. The stock is forming the right side of a base, poised to break out eventually at that 150 because we're seeing a nice pickup on volume. And this particular company, earlier this week, they unveiled their latest car, and it is absolutely the most powerful car ever built. The company management came out and said it is about the closest that, as you're going to get to a Formula One car. So an, uh, analysts, investors are excited. The stock is poised to trend higher. I'm not quite sure the demand unless you're on the Autobahn uh, in Germany, but uh, certainly it's ex exciting news. There are other stocks within not related to Ferrari, of course, is good old GM, General Motors. But what I did want to point out here is while the stock has been trying to reverse this really entrenched downtrend, it's had a nice week so far. Uh, 
actually this is a daily view so you can see it's giving back some of its earlier gains but i would argue that and all day long the downtrend is very firmly in place here you can see your 10 day simple moving average your green line the red is your 50 day simple moving average and even your longer term blue 200 day simple moving average is very much in a downtrend. So when you see this action, what oftentimes you'll see these reversal attempts, they will be met with resistance at that downward trending simple moving average. And we can see that the RSI very briefly touched upon positive territory, but was denied. And your, R, your MACD, while it had a positive crossover, your black up through the red, we're still in negative territory. We're still below, below that net neutral zero. So until this stock can break back above this 50 day and even it's 200 day, I would not be a buyer. We're still very much very firmly in a downward trending. We can look at another stock in the autos that is certainly more positive. The ticker symbol is FCAU. This is Fiat Chrysler. This one is a little further along in its potential downtrend reversal. We're looking at a daily view here. You can see the stock's having a nice uptick on the week. And this stock has broken up above that 50 day simple moving average. And it's what will eventually occur if we continue to have an uptrend. It's eventually gonna pull this 50 day sideways and then up. And you can see the RSI on fiat is much more clearly in positive territory in an uptrend your macd after having this positive crossover is entering into positive territory for those of you that like to pick up these stocks a little bit earlier now from my work i would need to see it break above the 200 but we are still 10 percent away from that you can still play potentially that move from its current position up to the 200 and keep a close eye because we can see back here where it indeed did again find resistance. So uh, FCAU is one. And then we can move on actually into auto supply stocks. And these stocks have been really quite strong, but it is another area within consumer discretionary that has uh, done quite well. This is O'Reilly, O-R-L-Y. And let's take a look at a weekly. We might get another better view here. Uh, the stock is up nicely, but you can see that it is has had an extensive move to the upside here. And AAP is another one that's in this industry group that is a bit of a play on these autos. It's more in line again with what's hot and it's advanced auto parts. Not super dynamic, It's, uh, but we are seeing definitely a pickup. When you look at it, this stock is up uh, almost 2.5% because within the consumer cyclicals space, we are seeing a little bit of a drag where those recently apparel specialty retailers um, are just kind of lagging, profit-taking moves into other areas. Actually, I do have one other area that we have a little bit of time that I can touch upon as far as what's not hot, and that is these broadline retailers. Uh, this is JWN, is Nordstrom. The stock's down almost 7% this week. What we are looking at here is a weekly, but again, I would argue that it is profit taking. There's been excessive uh, moves, if you will, with this gap up here on earnings. The stock is trading down. This is a daily view of JWN. And you can see that the RSI is just turning negative, but the MACD had a negative crossover. It's still in positive territory. So if we are able to hold here, if we were able to hold at the 60 level, I would expect JWN to potentially uh, pick up its gains. And then another one in these larger retailers is Macy's. But actually, Macy's does appear to be holding up quite a bit better. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Kohl's. And you can see this is KSS in these bigger retailers. And the stock is down 
5% on the week. But again, it is finding support. We're looking at a weekly. The screen line is your 50-day simple moving average. Your RSI is still quite positive. So in essence, there's a real sense that we're seeing quite a bit in the way of higher valuation, recently strong, faster moving stocks. We're seeing a little bit in the way of profit taking as investors look for more value. They want to get these stocks that have not been participating recently. And I talked about financials and industrials and then picking your pockets within those recently weak, now strong areas really is going to serve you uh, quite well. And so certainly within banking, we talked about the bigger bank stocks. Keep an eye out for those regionals to pick up and begin to participate because realistically higher yields do bode well for these banking stocks. And there's one last area I was going to ask Tom about because what we've seen after, uh, as many of you may know, Tom was affected by the storm Florence last week. And oftentimes after these big storms, and we saw this in Florida last year, FEMA will come in and they will provide funding in the way of very low cost loans, whether it's for property replacement, small businesses. So a lot of the banks in those areas that are impacted, again, we saw this last year in Texas and Florida, those areas that were impacted with that big storm, the banking stocks in those areas really had a pickup in their price movement because they were charged with helping to execute these uh, bank loans as uh, the federal government stepped in with funding. So that is an area I'm not quite familiar. I found it a little difficult. Uh, ABCB, we can take a quick look at that one. And that's a stock that, um, and it does not look so good, but it is one that services that uh, Carolina's area. So, um, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I talked about what's not hot and within those software stocks. So one other area is, uh, or one other stock, pardon me, is QDEL. And this is, I hate to bounce around a little, but I, I uncovered my list. So we talked about software stocks being really super strong. And some of those names are getting hit. Some of it is profit taking, but QDEL looks a little more serious in its decline. This one is now down 10%. We're looking at a weekly view. And while the RSI is still holding right here at that potentially positive area, we can see that we've had a negative crossover on the MACD. And the volume is pretty significant here. So this is one that may see a bit in the way of further decline, but it has been a really big winner. This is a stock that's been on our uh, idea list. So um, you can see whether we, the jury is still out for whether it's going to be a, a buying opportunity, but at this juncture, that 10% break is pretty big. Uh, but some of your other characteristics are looking uh, a bit positive. And then one other on that software, HUBS, this is HubSpot. And again, I would argue for this one, it is valuation based. This stock is down almost 9% for the week, but we can see this is a weekly view, the significant uptrend that this stock has had year to date. So with that, there's always an anticipation that perhaps one or two institutions want to book their profits and move to a different area of the markets. So you'll see this, but the longer term trend is still very, very much in place. So uh, what you're going to want to do is pay attention to those key technical indicators, your uh, RSI, your MACD, and those are going to be really helpful in telling you whether that uptrend has been broken. So we're looking at a weekly on HUBS, still strong on that RSI, still strong. The MACD is very much in positive territory. And your key 50 day, that's your uh, actually 10 week 50 day, that's your green line, is very much in an uptrend. And the stock 
does seem to have its longer term uptrend in place. So I would argue that a little bit more of a pullback, pullback in HubSpot, H-U-B-S, and this could be an ideal uh, buy point. Yeah, um, Mary Ellen, first of all, great job um, going through. You went, I know you went through a lot of different areas of the market, a lot of different I did. stocks. Um, yeah, I, I've been uh, I've been looking a lot at these software stocks. And I guess one question is many of the software stocks, obviously, because it has been such a strong area of the market, we haven't had a whole lot of chances to get in on pullbacks because mm -hmm. they have been consistently strong. So actually, yeah, you're bringing up a wonderful point. And I will argue that we did actually over the summer, we got two, uh, we had two opportunities to get into these stocks. So let's take a look at Adobe is a bellwether within this. And the weekly is not going to tell the whole story, but these stocks were impacted by trade war fears because there was a sense that tariffs would impact a lot of the products or the uh, machine, the, what they need to create their software. And so here's a look at a a break that we had. This is again, Adobe, ADBE. I'm taking you back to the end of July. And then we also had another downdraft at the end of June. And both of these were buying opportunities. I have a lot of these software stocks on my suggested holdings list. And in fact, on Monday, I sent out a note that, and something that you can do on stockcharts.com is do a comparison of industry groupings. And we also in that June and July period, the downdraft, this is uh, this particular drop was Facebook, Twitter, that drop, but it did spread out to other areas. And when you compare tech stocks to industrials and to the banks, the other areas that we're looking at today, the very same phenom happened. Well, particularly with industrials, the move out of these techs into industrials. So I would argue that we're seeing a similar type of downdraft and then it is presenting itself as a buy opportunity. The fundamentals are phenomenal for these stocks. The growth prospects are there, the demand for their products. So Yeah, and I would say that there's been a lot of accumulation in many of these stocks when you look at their volume trends. Mm -hmm. the, many times the pullbacks have been on much lesser volume than what we saw on the way up. But uh, great point. Great point. Yeah, we do uh we are ready to wrap up, but I do want to thank you for stopping by. This I I, I know our listeners uh, really enjoy getting this what's hot, what's not segment that uh, oh, super. We've been the past couple of weeks. And uh we're looking forward to continuing as we Sounds do. great. Sounds great. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Sure. And uh, there she goes. Yep. Another great what's hot and what's not segment. Um Aaron, yes. if you are ready. So of course continue. I'm ready. All right, let's take a quick peek. We don't have time to go through all of them. I just like to go through and let you know what sectors are hot right now as, as far as requests. Cyclicals and technology really um, taking up the space on our 10 and 10 requests. One materials and, and a little bit here in energy and healthcare. So interesting lineup here. Go ahead and get your likes in in the chat room because the most popular will be the second symbol. And we'll go ahead and get started with advanced auto parts. All right, sounds good. Um, all right, I think I may have, uh, are you seeing my screen, Aaron? I am seeing your mountains. That is not what I wanted you to see. <laughs> uh, you grab the screen. For one that's out your window, right? No, oh, no, that is not out my window. That looks a little bit like we saw what we saw in uh, Alaska, though. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, can you grab the screen for a second? Oh, absolutely. Anything I can do to help you? All right, there we go. Okay, so let me try this again. I I got to be careful because I get a little quick there on the button trying to. All right, that should be my. You screen. have your charts. You are good. I'm lost without my charts. <laughs> uh, all right, Ed. Advanced auto parts, first of all, has just been in a, a constant uptrend here. And this is part of the market that uh, Mary Ellen was just talking about. You know, part of the groups have been uh, really strong. Um, this, this is a specialty retailer, which has been on fire. Uh, when you look at the specialty retailers over the past few months, we've consolidated, but we're clearly still in a longer term uptrend in this group. And when you look at advanced auto parts relative to its peers, you can see that it not only has broken out, but it has been significantly outperforming the group during this consolidation period. And so as a result, 
when you got a stock that's outperforming within a group that's outperforming, you can only imagine that it's going to wildly outperform the S&P 500. So that's what we've been seeing. I like the stock a lot. Uh, we don't get too many chances. We haven't had that many chances to get in at the 20-day moving average. But when you look back, we've only had one close since back in April where we actually closed below the 20-day moving average. So I don't think there's any question in my mind, 20-day moving average is a buy on AAP. All right. And the most popular in the chat room is FireEye, F-E-Y-E. Yeah, I haven't looked at this one in a while. I do like the double top here, the breaking out above, and volume today is pretty good. It is in the software space. It's obviously been one of the weaker performers, but at some point you hope you get a change, and we do see volume coming in today supporting this breakout to almost a two-month high. So I'm beginning to like what I'm seeing here. The only thing I would say is that you've got some pretty good price support around $16, and that 20-day moving average is at $16.09. I'd like to see those levels hold on a pullback. So to annotate this, I would just simply draw a line right across where I'm speaking of, right there at about 16. You can see, except for this one pullback here, you can see that on the, the last two, or two of the last three pullbacks, we've held the $16 level, and that is now where the 20 day is, is at. So if you believe this downtrend has ended and you're into the stock because of improving volume trends and the breakout, you really wanna hold that rising 20 day. All right. The next one I have for you is uh, Echo, 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 <laughs> like Echo it. Global. I get, I get what you're doing there. <laughs> I got to keep up with the humor that you throw out there all the time. Well, once in a while. Uh, not everybody thinks it's humor, though. <laughs> so, uh, let's annotate here. First of all, I think, you know, this has been pretty much uh, textbook uh, TA when you look at it. I mean, there's your breakout, heavy volume on the breakout above about 34, 34 and a quarter, went back. We basically back tested not only the price support level, but then the 20 day moving average. And when I talk about solid reward to risk trades, this is what I mean. When you get back down to this level, this is where you expect for a stock to turn back up and go back up and challenge that recent high. So I think everything that you look at here on Echo from a technical perspective looks pretty good. I expect we're gonna go higher. We did consolidate mostly for, the, for most of 2018 and just had that big candle to break out, I think we go higher. All right. I know how much you love gold. Uh, let's look at a gold mining company, AEM. Looks like it's pulling back after unsuccessfully breaking through some resistance. Yeah. I, you know I'm not going to like the gold <laughs> stocks. I mean, literally the dollar has broken down, or at least in the short term has broken down, and gold still can't get going. I mean, that ought to tell you oh. something. Yeah, that's been bugging me too. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I just can't go there. I think it's because the dollar ends up coming back up. That's my guess. But anyhow, uh, we had some good support from early March at about the 37 and a half level. Went all you know, got onto an uptrend for a while, but then the downtrend resumed and the volume picked up. We lost 37 and a half. That is now a key gap resistance. We tried to get back up there, printed that bearish engulfing candle, and the volume accelerated on more selling. Came back up close to the 20 day, actually went just a little bit above it. I just am not a fan. I think that they're, it's a little bit like what uh, Mary Ellen was talking about. I, th I need to see more strength than just a couple of weeks. I mean, you get bounces on downtrending stocks all the time, but I need to see that it's going to stick. If there's one positive, it's that the volume has been heavier here on this move to the upside, but there's a lot of overhead resistance still to negotiate. For me, I wouldn't even be interested in thinking about the stock until it gets through this 37 and a half level, probably even the 50 day. But I, I think if you do that, you probably get through both of them about the same time. All right. Excellent. Uh, the next one, I think, looks short term. Uh, OK, how about TRXC? I got a buy signal rising bottoms on the PMO. Looks like a breakout from an ascending triangle. <laughs> yeah, this looks awesome. Uh, and it's in a great uh, area medical equipment. Um, you can see the medical equipment group has been continually moving higher. We had Julius on the other day. He was talking about how good healthcare looked. I agree with him. I think healthcare looks good. I think that this is going to be a, another area of the market that's going to continue to perform well in the fourth quarter. But the breakout here above this $6 level, uh, I think, is important uh, technically. So I'm going to draw that line going across there. And, uh, you know, after moving from what, uh, buck 75 or whatever to $6 in less than two months, it took some time to consolidate. 
but now we're making a breakout. I think this is the start of another move to the upside. So I like TRXC. All right. You and I agree on that one for sure. All right. One that I don't like, uh, Grubhub. Grub. Um, I do like Grub without even looking at the chart. I'm already <laughs> familiar with it. Um, it's uh, in a nice uptrend. Short term, yeah, it's struggling a little bit, but I think it's at some support uh, where it held in early September and where it broke out from. But I'll show you a couple of things that I really like about this stock. Um, here was the breakout um, right at about 136, 135, I don't know. Uh, we made the breakout. Could have used a little bit more volume on the breakout. Um, so maybe we consolidate. Maybe this is a 50-day test coming. I don't know if we have a negative divergence on the PPO. But if we do, then it might make sense. We'll get a little bit more weakness. But when you look at the restaurants and bars, this is the group has not broken out from January. Look at Grubhub relative to the group. Very, very strong performer. And so I think it's going to take some time, catch its breath here, and I believe it goes higher. All right. Next one, a computer services industry company, Conduent, C-N-D-T. I see a rounded top. I got a PMO sell signal and overbought territory. Yuck for me. Um, yeah, I like it, but I think that there is downside potential if it doesn't hold its recent low, because we did make a really nice breakout here above that $21 level. Volume's been strong on the way up. The selling's been on lighter volume. I think it's just consolidating. My guess is we might have a negative divergence with this last high. And so we, if we, if we start to see selling below the 20, I think you're going to see the 50-day moving average. But I would be a buyer at $21. I think that's a great entry point. All right. This one's pretty interesting. Activision, uh, Blizzard, ATVI. I don't know. It could be a flag there. It's getting a little overbought as far as my PMO, but yeah, a little bit of a, a cup and handle uh, here, at least a, a nice oh, cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm okay with it off of a pretty lengthy uptrend. The stock has been going higher for quite some time, but off of that high right there, you can see the uh, cup that has formed. This action that we're seeing so far is on lighter volume, which is exactly what you want to see in a handle. I would prefer it on a 20 day test if we can get down that far. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Activision here looks pretty good. All righty. How about Micron? I'm, you know, I just, that failed uh, breakout. I, I'm not a fan. Well, I think they, re well, they did report last night and they did about what I would have expected based on the, the chart. I mean, this is a stock now that's been underperforming since uh, back at the end of May under, versus its peers. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at semiconductor stocks, I mean, you can see the semiconductor group is holding on to its support level at about 3350. Micron is not. So money is rotating within semis away from Micron and into other areas of uh, semiconductors. And you can see the last move down in the break of support came right on uh, the day where we had this real heavy volume. So I think the move back up to test the 20 day moving average, if I was going to do anything with stock and I'm not going to short, but if I were, I would be a short because uh -huh. I think you've got really good uh, support that broke to the downside on heavy volume. Look at that shooting star candle right at the 20 day moving average. To me, uh, Micron looks like it's rolling over. They just lowered guidance. I don't like it right now. All right. Definitely not good. All right. How about Chesapeake Energy? Uh, I see kind of a cup and handle. I got a PMO buy signal. What do you think? Uh, I'm not. Well, the cup, unless you're talking about here. I mean, normally your cup should should start off the top. I mean, this would be a very lengthy cup. So mm -hmm. I don't know. This is it's kind of a sloppy one. Okay. Uh, it's, you know, went down below its 50 day moving average The 20 is below the 50 and it's been downtrending here for a little bit. Uh, I really thought that this four, four and a quarter, 450 area right over here on this first low would hold. And when we went down below it, there's mixed signals. We broke the support level, but the volume was just kind of moderate. Um, I would be watching the group. If the group can't break out, we've been consolidating now for multiple months within the space. And so I think if we can't hold on, I'm going to just draw some lines here on the individual group because we have been holding so far. And if we can continue to, to hold and then break out, perhaps we will see some strength in Chesapeake down the road. I'm a little nervous here at the 50 day moving average. You can see we've tried to get through on a couple of occasions the last two months and we failed. So I'm just going to be kind of watching this one for now. All right. And that is 10 stocks 
Thank you, everybody, for putting in your requests. And here are the ones that we went through. I will get those up in the Market Watchers live chart list at the end of the show. All you have to do is go to any Market Watchers live blog entry, and the link is there. And just there's a link at the top of our blog in general. So just go check it out. All right, it's time for our final market update. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. What has been happening while we have been talking? All right, we can see that the, the Dow, all of the markets, uh, well, the NASDAQ is lower right now. It had started higher like the rest of the indexes. You can see OEX came down, tested yesterday's close and has come back up. But uh, most of the markets in the last, it looks like the last hour or so, are, are starting to pull back a bit after being up higher. S&P 400 is mostly unchanged now. Russell 2000, again, opened higher and then really tumbled down lower into the negative territory. But it looks like it's finding some support at about 1715. Russell 2000 currently reading 1716.24. The TSX. Canadian markets are up right now, forming a little bit of a flag here. Could see a bit more of a continuation of this uptrend. We've got uh, Treasury yields down slightly, but still just over 3% at 3.07. We've got uh, UUP on a big gap up, but now consolidating sideways. And gold, large gap down here and made up about half of those losses, but uh, fell back again, currently reading at about 113.42 for GLD. TLT is down slightly, and we can see USO, really uh, volatile trading day right now. Uh, it was gapped up and got all the way up to uh, $15.15, .15, uh, pulled all the way back down to yesterday's close and now is heading right back up toward that intraday high, currently reading at $15.03. And that concludes our final market update. Tom, what you got for us? All right, I wanted to follow up on a point that uh, Mary Ellen made earlier, talking about one of the stocks that are hot, uh, that is hot, and that's Deer, ticker symbol DE. She had mentioned the seasonality, so I just wanted to point this up out for everyone. Uh, Deer, over the last 20 years, you can look and see uh, how the, the company has performed by month. Check out October, November, and December here. 14.2% has been the average. If you add these three numbers up, October, November, and December, it's averaged 14.2% over the last 20 years in just the last three months of the year. And if you add all of the months up going across here, it's 17.4%. So 82% of Deer's gains in the past 20 years have occurred from October through December. So when we pull up the chart on Deer and you see that it is recently breaking out above these highs, if it clears the highs in May and June, just keep in mind, this is a stock that historically does extremely well in the fourth quarter. And I'm gonna be uh, in my blog articles over the next uh, probably week or two, I'm gonna really focus on some of the trends that we should be looking for in the fourth quarter. A lot of the trends that are out there and how that might impact fourth quarter of 2018. So anyway, that was all I had. Just wanted to, to point out deer and the historical bear, or excuse me, bullishness that we've seen over the last two decades. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and get into the sentiment update. Got some interesting charts to show you. All right, first of all, before I get started, as always, I want to remind everybody that sentiment is a contrarian indicator meaning that when people get very bullish, then you typically should look for a downside reversal. And if you see everybody getting bearish, and that, that especially includes newspaper headlines, magazine headlines, if you start seeing everybody bearish on the market, then that is when you start looking for that upside reversal. So I like to pay attention and give you guys the update on the sentiment numbers, just so you can get an idea of what uh, you know to expect going into the next week based on where the money is flowing and of course where uh, just the feelings are of investors. I know that's uh, kind of a weird kind of analysis to look at emotional uh, numbers, but with sentiment, that's exactly what we're doing. 
All right, so for the first one, I'm gonna show you the put call ratio. I have inverted the uh, readings just so that it makes it easier for oversold and overbought analysis. So as you can see, the scale is inverted here. Uh, the smaller the number, that means the more bullish people are becoming. And of course, when you get, like I said, everybody getting very bullish, that's when you sh should start looking for that downside reversal. So currently we are on the rise. So we're not in overbought territory yet. Uh, we are seeing more bullish activity as far as uh, the polls go and as far as the put, puts and calls, the options market is going, which is why we look at this. And so I'm seeing them starting to rise. We're starting to see more uh, bullish activity here. But uh, overall, you know, we're not overbought. I think this really is reading more in the neutral to somewhat bullish uh, or somewhat bearish just because we are rising toward overbought. But overall, I would look at this chart as neutral. Okay, AAII, American Association of Individual Investors. Uh, this is a poll that you can take actually, I believe on AAII.org. And we keep track of how many bulls and how many bears in that poll. They report them once a week, uh, what the totals are, and, and we take a, a look at that. Well, right now, I would say this chart is reading exactly neutral. We have, uh, of the three positions you can have, bull, bear, or uh, neutral, we have about a third in each of those quadrants. So, and in fact, have bulls and bears equal to each other. And so I'm not seeing anything really productive to talk about on this chart. It just really is straight up neutral. All right, let's look at the National Association of Active Investment Managers. Uh, these are technicians, by the way, uh, that are part of this particular group. And it's always interesting to see what their exposure is to the market. So that's what we're looking at right now is how exposed are they? And of course, the more exposure, the more bullish they are. And again, sentiment being contrarian, you should start looking for those reversals, typically off of those high, high readings. Uh, obviously, there have been some you know, times when it didn't quite uh, fulfill. You can see right back here in 2013, we did see a little bit of sideways action here. I mean, this is a weekly chart, but overall, uh, it didn't come back to bite. Uh, as, as much as it could have. Uh, so anyway, I wanna go through what we're seeing here. Well, right now, we did see, if you look in the, the thumbnail, we saw a pullback on the exposure, but it's still at 80, you know, at 83, 84, it's still pretty elevated. So I would say that we're looking at, uh, you know, as far as the readings go with that pullback and exposure, that's showing a little bit of bearishness, right? Because they're, wanting to become a little bit less exposed to the market. But the reading is still high, telling me that, you know, there's still some bullish sentiment going on there. So I was reading this chart as, you know, neutral uh, to bullish, honestly, because we do still have some of these high uh, exposure readings. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, I said that exactly wrong. I'm feeling neutral to bearish about these readings because we do have the bullishness of a high reading. Um, and although we're having that pullback and we are having that pullback, that's telling me that there is a little bit of bearishness. So, you know, overall, I would look at this chart as more uh, neutral to bearish. And again, that's because we have high exposure, that's bullish, so that's bearish for the market. And then we saw a pullback in exposure and that's say, showing people are bearish. So that sort of cancels each other out, which is why I see the chart as mostly neutral. All right, uh, Wall Street Sentiment Survey, that is what we're in the process of taking right now. If you are in the uh, chat room, uh, or even if you're watching this within the, the 24 hours that we're still running this, uh, you can take the poll and we can see how people are feeling as far, far as bullish or bearish. And we will look at that poll shortly. But I report those numbers over to uh, wallstreetsentiment.com. And so you can go check out some of their charts there. Um, but what I wanted to point out is you can see that we did start to see a little bit more bullishness uh, going on, but we expanded the bears at the same time. So when I look at the ratio, when we look at that bulls 
versus bears ratio. The larger this number gets, the higher we get. That is telling us that uh, sentiment is very bullish. Uh, and typically, you look for a downside mo re uh, reversal, remember, when things are very bullish. Well, right now, uh, we are seeing a bit more on the, we're not even, because that would be one, uh, but we're not quite to twice as many bulls as bears. Uh, so this week, you know, going into this week, it, it was looking like, you know, the majority of people were bullish. So that was, you know, an expectation should be uh, some t downside movement. Well, of course, turns out uh, market timers were pretty much on the ball here and called a bullish week. And we are starting to see a bullish week. So I, I show this chart because I wanted you to see what everybody else voted. I know that the audience last week voted for a um, lower on the week. So you can see, interestingly, that was not with the majority. And so I thought I would I show this one. I, I went mostly unchanged. Uh, look, looks like I'm I'm pretty much out of luck on that one. But uh, yeah, all of the bears out there uh, didn't do so well this week either. But I think most of our portfolios are pretty happy that we failed on that <laughs> call. All right, let's look at Rydex asset analysis. And uh, these are a, a basket full of Guggenheim funds now. Uh, but Rydex was a company that used to manage them. And it's a uh, a basket of funds of which there are bear funds and there are bull and sector funds. And then also we look at uh, money market readings, okay? Because that's kind of your neutral position, right? People are in cash. They're not hedging to the point of, of adding more in the way of uh, bear funds. Uh, they're just, they're uh, in that neutral position. So what we do is we look at the assets. Those are reported every night and we plot them here on this lovely chart. And so we want to watch the the bull the bear bull ratio and uh, in this case, you know, we want to see uh, those readings right now have been in the in the center here. Uh, but as the numbers get more and more uh, small, okay, that means that the bull assets are increasing and increasing. So the more bullish uh, the higher the ratio, and that's when we start looking for those downside reversals. Well, currently the ratio is declining just somewhat, um, but overall when I look at the uh, actual assets and what's going on here, I can see that we've got rising bear funds, definitely rising money market funds, and that's been in play um, pretty much all of September is an increase in the money markets. And that tells you, like I said, cash moving to the sidelines is I'm not uh, ultra bearish. I'm not moving into a bear fund, but I'm certainly not bullish. And notice that we have a, a steady decline in the equities. So that's telling us that people, as far as where their money is going, are a bit more bearish right now. And it, that actually is good for the market. So when we see this ratio heading down, we actually want to see that because that's showing an increase in bearishness. And again, as far as sentiment is concerned, uh, you want to see excessive uh, bearishness to set up a nice uh, upside rally. All right, so that pretty much concludes. Uh, actually, I wanted to show you one more. I always forget. I want to show you the VIX chart because it's showing some interesting information just over the, for the next uh, week, what I would look for at the beginning of the week. So right now uh, we have some, we got some excessively climactic uh, bullish readings on uh, yesterday's large move to the upside. And I think you could, you can look at this in two ways. Uh, one is as an, a bullish initiation Okay, and I think that was a fairly good assessment on this move, especially since we came up uh, with that uh, upside today, the continuation of our rally. Uh, but notice the VIX, it is starting to get toward that upper Bollinger Band. And again, I invert the readings because to me, they're more when people are more bullish, that means you know that you should be looking about at uh, the pulling back of the market in the very short term. Well, we haven't penetrated it yet. And you can see that, that Bollinger band, the Bollinger bands are expanding. So I think we could still hold on to some upside, but I'd be a little bit 
concern, watch these breath readings. If they get a, a little bit too high over the next day or two, uh, or even in the next day with a, a VIX penetrating uh, that top of that Bollinger Band, look for a cup, look for an exhaustion, look for a, a an exhaustion uh, in the very short term. So let's go ahead and look at the summary slides so we can uh, put it all together into one big picture. So right now I'm looking at the put call ratio, you know, bullish sentiment is rising. Um, and I would say that is bullish until we start getting overbought. And, you know, so at this point, people are getting more bullish. So of course, we should expect some bullish activity until we get into that overbought territory. We're seeing slightly less bears, uh, but that bull bear ratio is at one. That is really straight up neutral. Uh, name has a pullback on the ex exposure, which is somewhat bullish for the market. So we had that pullback, but with a very high readings, uh, that's why I'm, I'm listing it as somewhat bullish. Right X ratio, money markets rising. We're getting that decline in equities. So I would say that is neutral to bullish for the market because again, when people are getting out of equities, that that's, means they're bearish. Uh, breadth and VIX, like I said, the breadth is very robust, but that VIX is nearing the upper Bollinger Band. So we could be looking at a possible buying is exhaustion coming up next week. And so in conclusion, I would have to say that, you know, right now, I think sentiment is, is showing neutral to bullish for the market. And I think your exception right now is that the VIX is getting very low and that could mean, you know, some very bearish, uh, that, that has some bearish um, implications. All right, so let's take a peek at our poll and what is everybody thinking and what are you thinking, Tom? What are you gonna go with? I, I am gonna be looking next week, uh, you know, more than likely I'm gonna go in again as mostly unchanged. I think we're gonna have some choppy trading, but I think overall we're gonna finish about the same. Well, I am thinking about the comment you made a couple minutes ago about being excessively climactic. Mm -hmm. Cause I have, that's a new one. That was a new one for me. That is very, <laughs> That is very climactic when you have excessively climactic. <laughs> I just thought that was, was funny. Yes. All. It's very climactic to the upside. Yes. Yes. Anytime you got excessively climactic, that is serious climactic activity. <laughs> um, yeah. As far as next week goes, I, I can't go against the market. I mean, we're in all time high territory. It's taken the Dow eight months to get there. The S and P just broke out again. I think we go higher. Um, if we pull back, I think that the rising 20 day moving average is going to hold. I just I don't think that the market is ready for a big pullback. And with earnings season coming up and all the economic reports being as strong as they've been, I just I think the market just continues mm -hmm. pushing. Higher. Yep. I, I mean, overall, I would say in the I, I agree with you in the intermediate term. Uh, you know, if I'm going to what's going to happen at the end of next week, like I said, I think we're going to still see a little bit of upside downside. I think it's going to end up canceling things out. I mean, you're you're feeling pretty good, even though September has, you know, typically been not so great for. Yeah, but I always do temper that. You know, I talk a lot about historical tendencies, but to me, it's a secondary indicator. It's like the PPO, the RSI, mm -hmm. anything else. It's a secondary indicator. So it's nice to know. It's good to know what the PPO is doing, what the RSI is doing. If you know, for you, the PMO, mm -hmm. uh, also the historical nature. I like to try and line all those things up with what the technical picture is telling me. So that would be the only thing I would say is that when the technicals are lining up, that it's time. Then it's time. So there you go. Uh, yeah. So I got to go. I got to go on the long side. I've got to be bullish again next week. And just knowing that even if we pull back, I'm still going to be bullish as long as it's contained. You know, well, it worked out pretty well for you this week when you went uh, bullish. So, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't even remember going bullish. So, oh, you know what? You did not vote because you were gone. Oh, <laughs> right. Well, you uh, built you me up, and now you just tore me down. You tore me down after building me up. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, well, we got to wrap up here. Um, so, uh, I guess we got uh, some things coming up on the schedule for next week that you can see on your screen. Uh, I do want to thank all of you for being with us today. Thanks to Mary Ellen for stopping by and sharing with us. Uh, complete that survey if you don't mind. We do like to get that uh, feedback. 
As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe, and hopefully we'll see you right back here on Monday. Happy trading. Thank you.